Hello, welcome to the first session of this Lino printing course. Today we're going to look at the basics. In this session, we're going to look at the tools that we use for Lino cutting. We're going to look at the different types of marks you can make with the cutting tools and how to print with black. And then we're going to do a positive and negative design based on a leaf. Uh, here are a couple of examples. In the following sessions, we will look at colour and we will also look at the uh, more in-depth techniques of reduction and multiple block printing. The first thing you're going to need is some lino. Um, traditional brown hessian backed lino, uh, people always found quite difficult to work with. A um, little hint, if you do have something that you want to work with, it heat it first with an iron so it's warm and it's much easier to cut. But these days we get um, what are called soft cut or easy cut um, linos. This is a one called soft cut and I have to say that this one I found a little bit rubbery. And the one I prefer is this blue one called easy cut, which is fairly straightforward to get hold of from specialist craft. You also need um, a liner cutting tool. This is a basic one. Comes with a handle with an adjustable um, screw bit to put the blades in and five different blades. Um, two of which have got a U-shaped profile. Can you just about see that? And two have got a V-shaped profile. It comes with a knife too, which I have never found very useful at all. So. I have a separate knife as well, which comes in very handy. And just to say that these have a sharp end and a, and a rounded soft end that goes into the end of here. And then you tighten it up. Something else you'll find useful is to have a cutting mat or cutting board. Here's one that I've made with a little sort of L shape in the corner and that allows me to put my liner into that corner and hold it firmly when I'm cutting. Um, people actually tend not to find the, this bit very useful but it is a good safety precaution. I'm left-handed so my L is that side. If you're right-handed you put your L on that side. You're also going to need a roller or rollers um, block printing ink and something to roll it out on. This is a laminated piece of card. It could be a piece of glass, anything that's nice and smooth. You can buy a starter kit um, from places like Hobbycraft for between 24 and 34 pounds. But I think it's probably better to shop around and buy the individual bits. So there are parts in the kits that you may never use. But if you look for rollers, easy cut lino, uh, cutting tools and block printing inks, you will probably manage to get the basics together for under £20. Time to get started. It's worth noting that the lino has uh, two sides which are both um, cuttable and I'm going to use the reverse side to practice with my tools. So I'm going to start with the smaller V-shaped tool uh, here. And to start making a straight cut, I, I'm sitting down, which makes a lot of difference. I put the tool on the line at about 30 degrees, push it in and then flatten it, leveling it off so that it scoops and runs along the surface of the line. And then I tilt it backwards to lift it out. It's a scooping action. Okay. It's worth practicing doing short and longer scoops. You can also go deeper by pushing harder first. So you get a thicker line with the V shaped tools. You can get thicker and thinner lines. It's worth practicing uh, with the different sizes as well. Once you've got the hang of doing um, straight lines, then start to try to do curvy lines. And you'll find there's a limit to how far you can go. 
unless you actually move the lino around. So what I'm going to do is take the lino on the board and turn the whole lino like so to make my turning cut. Try not to twist my wrist around too much, but let the lino do the work. Notice I'm cleaning away the cut bits. You want to get rid of those. Um, you don't want to spoil your print later on. Okay, so I've got that basic, um, basic lines, straight lines, wavy lines. The next thing I'm going to do is a rougher line. So as I'm pushing in again at 30 degrees, and then as I move along, I'm wobbling from side to side. And what I should get is a line with a bit of rough texture along it. So that can be a really interesting line to use. With these lines, you may want to cross them over each other a little bit, called cross hatching. And that will create areas of pattern and tone on your lino. Okay, so cross hatching. It's worth just trying the different size tools as well. I'm going to switch to um, the smaller U-shaped tool. And what I hope you'll see is that you get a bigger groove much much bigger and it has a consistent pretty consistent width i find the u-shaped tools are mainly useful for taking larger areas out so i'm going to take out a strip next to it and a bit more so you can take out larger sections the rule of thumb this is the bit where people struggle to get their head around it, is that what you take out will remain the colour of the paper. What you leave behind is where the ink will sit and that will print the ink. So I'm going to try the um, larger V tool now. And with this, what's interesting is that if you're careful, you can produce really quite fine lines with it. But if you push in deeper, you can create thicker lines and then taper them off. So you get a really quite nice, longer stroke in there. Now using the small U-shaped tool, I'm going to push in at quite a steep angle, about 60 degrees. I'm going to turn the whole of the liner through 180 degrees and then scoop out to create a dot. So just to show you that again, about 60 degrees, I turn the whole lino through 180 degrees and scoop that out to get a dot. It takes a little bit of practice to get a fine dot on there. The next sort of thing is, let's you see here where I've taken out um, a section, it ends very roughly. If I want that to end quite neatly, what I'm going to do is first of all, cut a very definite line with the fine tool. And now using the smaller U-shaped tool, I'm going to cut up to that line. So it gives me a very definite stopping point. With that line there. If I do the same thing, but I cut the line with a knife, now you can't see that line and it won't print. 
but I can scoop to that line very easily, creating this nice radial effect. So I'd say you can't see that line, but I can. And those are the basic marks for your printing. I'm going to add a few more and then I'm going to tidy away and then I'm going to show you just printing a simple test block. Now to print. Normally I'd have newspaper on the table, but the newspaper is just visually too confusing for you. So I've got a little bit of used paper, ordinary paper. Uh, and I've got several sheets so that um, I can lift one and have a cleaner piece of paper underneath. Uh, it can be quite a messy process. So first things first, some of my ink. I'm squirting it onto a lid. Blob like that. And then using a piece of card, I'm going to transfer some of that ink onto my piece of um, acetate. And then I'm going to load up from this reservoir, I'm going to load up my roller, rolling it around so that it covers the roller. Not rolling it very far. And then on this, so that roll is, is lovely and sticky. And on this piece down here, I'm now going to roll that out to get the right consistency. I want a consistency that isn't slurpy like it is there. It's a consistency which is like um, rough sandpaper. So I roll it out in order to get that consistency right. You hear that sound? It's hard to see it. The texture is like rough sandpaper. If it's slurpy, then your ink will tend to fill in the grooves. If it is like fine sandpaper, you'll get a pale print. So moving the ink out of the way, and inking up my lino plate. So rolling the ink carefully over, trying to make sure it covers it nice and evenly. And as I start to work down, I can see the ink getting a little bit too thin. So I reload my roller from the reservoir. I roll it out again to the right consistency rough sandpaper and then I ink make sure I get right to the edge okay that's nice and evenly covered rollers come with a little sort of lip here I'm going to put that down so that I'm minimizing my mess and this piece of paper uh, that I've rolled out on, I'm going to move that out of the way. So I'm working on clean paper. Just check my fingers aren't dirty. Place a piece of paper. I tend to go for significantly larger, maybe twice the size. So I've got a bit of border. Pressing it on gently just to make sure it isn't going to move. And then we need to burnish it to get the ink to transfer from the lino to the paper. There are several different ways of doing that. The simplest is to use a spoon, put your thumb in the middle and work your way around. You can get special burnishing tools. Um, they know better than a spoon. So that just takes a little while. It can be quite uneven um, when you use this technique. Some people, if they've got one, will use a second roller. And of course that's going to get a much more even effect but what i would recommend is stand up and apply as much pressure as you can 
Now, I'm curious to see how that's coming on. It can sometimes take a little while to get the ink to fully transfer. But what I can do is holding one side, I can peel up and begin to have a look and see, oh yes, it needs a bit more pressure along that top edge. And on the bottom. Make sure your roll's clean before you do this, if you are using a roller. I'm going to switch back to the spoon. Burnish that. It's about, that's about right. So let's take that off. Oh, actually, I can see a bit in the middle, which is very messed. Just get that done. Oh, a little bit uneven in places. Um, quite often with the first print it is because you've got a little bit of grease off your fingers on it. But you can see, I hope, that where I've cut away, we've got the white spaces of the colour of the paper behind, and where I've left um, the liner, we've got the black. You can hopefully see as well how delicate some of these lines really are. So the cross hatching, the very fine lines have come out really, really well. And I just spotted something which is an important little lesson. Um, just there is a little bit of of the blue lino, which I hope see I haven't quite cleaned away, leaving a bit of a, a stain and a blob on my piece of work. So do watch out for those bits. But you can see that there's quite a range of, of marks you can make with those simple tools. The next step is to apply that um, to a design. You can find some great examples of lino printing on the internet. Here are four that I've printed off um, as examples of thinking about design. And perhaps the most important thing to start with is to think about what are you going to cut? Are you going to cut the line, as in here, or are you going to cut out in between the line, the sort of solid areas? And you look at the positive and negative in this, the black building with the white windows next to the white building with the black windows the darkness in the foreground and the lightness of the sky similarly this one which uh taking out the stripes and just doing a line around the outside to give suggestion of the nose there the positive and negative of land and sky whereas this one is much much more simple this is just following the lines um but playing around with different types of lines, some thinner, some thicker, some more cross hatched and so on. And so there are two elements to the design stage that I'd like you to consider. One is, do you cut out the line or do you cut out in between the lines? That's the first step. And secondly, what type of mark do you use? Do you use a thin line or a thick line? Do you use straight or wavy lines? Do you use continuous or broken lines? Do you use wiggly lines? So those elements are the key parts of the design process. So to explore this, uh, I'm going to use a leaf motif. Um, with the uh, email accompanying this uh, session, I will send out a copy of this sheet uh, if you want to print it off, or you can find your own leaf motif. So a fairly simple um, design but what we're going to look at is different ways of cutting it so I've got these two examples here which I showed you previously I'll put them that way around um, we have here the line around the outside has been cut and between the veins the um, line has been cut out on the other hand this side the veins have been cut and the background has been cut out as well. Here, wiggly lines used along the veins and some of the background cut out in a radial sort of fashion. 
Again here, the veins, which would be the strong lines, left in, cutting out around uh, the outside of them, and also a little bit pattern around the outside. So my first step is going to be choosing the leaf and tracing it. I'm going to be tracing it um, half the size of the piece of lino so that I can trace it twice onto the same piece of lino. So here's my tracing, uh, half the size of the lino, and I'm going to turn it over, carefully line it up, and then draw over the back to transfer the pencil. I've used a 4B pencil, which is lovely and soft. A, it's a good technique to remember is if you're going to trace something, then turn it over and use this technique so that it's going backwards to what you have originally had because your prints um, end up being backward, end up reversing. So I'm going to go back over, pressing quite hard to transfer that on. Notice I've gone around the stem. That will make sense later. There. It's transferred on fairly clearly. Um, I can go straight on and do the second one, but I think what I'm going to do is go back over the, with more pencils to make sure it's nice and dark. One problem with this trenching technique is that if you make a mistake, you can't rub it out very easily on liner. So do take your time with it and be careful. So I complete my tracing. Notice I've traced it um, the same way. Um, I've not allowed it to reverse. And there's a reason for doing this very carefully, um, which I will show you in session two. It's so we can print one version over the top of another using colour. I've also put a middle line in just so that I can be clear where that centre is. Um, if you don't get it exactly perfect, it doesn't matter. Um, I've just mentioned as well that I've managed to smudge this side because being a left-hander, I've doing this side, I've sort of rubbed against it. It does smudge very easily, so just be a little bit careful. Um, so time to start cutting. I'm going to start with the V-shaped cutter. And my choice for the veins is to use a wiggly line. Just a fine wiggly line working my way up. You need to make these decisions. That's what the design process is. What type of line do you want to use? So this one, I'm cutting out the veins on this side. I'm going to do it in a very specific order. This one is more straightforward to get your head around. So I'll do this one first. Cutting out the veins. There's that lovely wiggly line. Take your time. I'm going quite quickly. That's a little too quickly. Turn it. To make it easy to cut. There we are. And now I'm going to use a the same tool to work around the outside. So, so far I've only used the V-shaped tool and I've cut around the outside using a smooth line and I've used a wiggly line for the veins. It might be you find you prefer one tool over the others and that's the main one you use. But I'm going to use the um, smaller U-shaped tool to take out some of the background now. But first, I want to give it a definite edge that I'm going to cut to. So I'm going to use my knife to cut myself a line coming all the way around the outside. Just a few millimeters in to give myself a border. Could use a ruler if you wanted to, to be a bit more precise. But I'm not too worried about that. 
Okay, and now I'm going to scoop from the outer edge to that border. Um, I could do um, horizontal or vertical lines. I could do cross hatching. Um, I could do lots of dots or small dashes or, or, or whatever. It really is up to you. I could do wiggly lines. I think that's what I'm going to do, actually. I'm going to come out from there with a, just a sort of curving wiggle, just a gentle wiggle, and keep that going all the way around. So now that I've completed that one where I've taken out the veins and some of the background, I'm going to move on to this one. And on this one, I'm going to leave the veins and most of the background, but I'm going to take out the bit in between. And that can be a little bit trickier. There are two methods for doing this. One is, first of all, to take a fine tool and just carefully, this is a fine V tool, cut around each vein. And around the outside. This will give you a neater finish. Imagine you've done that for the whole section and now I can scoop within there taking out the material and when you do this think about the direction you're going to scoop in okay I'm going to stick with this fine tool I do find this is the one that really works for me so uh, I'm going to try to scoop in the same direction as the veins it'll leave a slight texture behind I think will add to the look of the leaf. So you can see that section coming out. I'm going to carry on and do the whole thing. So I think I've finished cutting. I'm going to give it a print uh, to see how it comes out. But just a quick reminder, on one side, I've cut out the veins and some of the background, plus an outline. On the other side, I've cut out in between the veins. I've also put a little bit of pattern in the background, but left most of it. Uh, a general rule of thumb for designing a uh, lino is to think about taking away at least a third of the lino in cutting. But of course, as with any rules, you, you might break it and find you produce a brilliant piece of work. I'm going to print it, um, but should I find that I'm, that I'm not happy with it, I can always cut more out. Well, I can't really stick any more in. So if you're unsure uh, if you've taken enough out, Print it and have a look at the print to make that decision. So let's get printer. So just as before, some fresh ink. And I load my roller in this reservoir and then roll out to the consistency of rough sandpaper and start inking. Take your time with this, trying to make sure you get a good, even coating of ink all over. First one is particularly important, it primes the plate. So even if it doesn't print perfectly, get the, print, the plate ready for further prints. More ink needed. Which 
sure it's nice and dense. Now, I just made a silly mistake, didn't draw it out to right consistency, so I've got a few bits of fill there. So what I'm going to do is use a cocktail stick to just clean those bits out. Okay, just clean those bits out. Notice in particular on this one how the texture is being picked up quite a lot of the cut. So it's quite important to think about the direction of your cut. Let's see how this prints. So I will remove that inky piece of paper. Place a piece of fresh paper over the top and then get burnishing. So there is my first print from this plate. Um, notice the marks coming through here. I could clean those out if I wanted to, but I quite like them. Um, and I, again, there's a few bits here. If I wanted to, I could take them out. I could recut if I wanted to. Also, I just want you to notice the way that the image reverses. Even if you've got um, only got black ink, you can introduce colour by printing on top of coloured paper or by preparing coloured backgrounds. Uh, I'm going to show you a slideshow now of students' work working just with black ink um, using different types of subjects. First of all, a couple of the leaf studies. Um, but you'll notice in some of them that they've actually coloured the backgrounds first. I hope you enjoy today's session. And if you do Facebook, please do post images of what you've been doing on the Art for All Facebook page. Details coming up after the slideshow. Thanks. Bye-bye.